Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I wanted to go through some plants that I probably won't be buying for this year due to a whole bunch of different reasons and just wanted to go through them with you. Hope you find today's video entertaining and helpful one way or another. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and yeah, let's just jump right into today's video. Okay, so all of these plants that I'm going to be talking about today are going to be common, very accessible plants. So not the rare super hype plants, but more so just, you know, your everyday plants that you find in local nurseries. You don't have to go online to find them. Just literally walk to your local grocery store, a home hardware department, nursery, whatever the case may be. These are just your regular old plants. First off, I wanna talk about is the peace lily. So the peace lily is definitely not one of the plants that I really enjoy for a whole variety of reasons. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but these are definitely high maintenance plants. I would group them into kind of similar to calatheas in the sense that they really, really enjoy moist medium. You have to consistently be on top of your watering for your soil and Honestly, I just do not have time for that. Even if it were to be in Lekka and I just have to fill the water reservoir, I think it would just be way too much work for the plant that I will be getting. And peace lilies can kind of grow very big. So they're really good as like statement pieces, whether it be like on a table, on the floor, whatever. They just get a little bit too big. And when you're collecting so many, so many plants, you don't want that many big plants because they just take up way too much space. Also, the flowers just don't really look that nice to me. I don't know about you guys. If you think peace lily flowers are really beautiful, comment it down below and prove me wrong because I find that they just look like very like simple blooms. Although it's like maybe very easy for it to bloom, I just don't think they look very nice. And I don't think it lasts very long either compared to like other blooms that could last really, really long. But yeah, those are the reasons why I probably won't be getting a peace lily anytime soon or ever. <laughs> Don't hate me. Next up on the list of plants that I won't be getting includes the ivy plant. These plants are definitely, definitely spider mite magnets. So very, very prone to like pests. And I don't think that's something I want in my care. And it's just such a hassle to have to deal with constantly inspecting your plants for spider mites, thrips, mealybugs, whatever. I know you're supposed to generally do that with all your plants, but certain plants just have like a higher risk to attract these bugs, which the ivy plant definitely is. It's always advertised as an easygoing plant and very beginner friendly, but I definitely don't feel like that's the case. So buyer beware. Ivy plants are not easy and you could end up killing your plant very, very quickly if you're not on top of, you know, caring for it. Okay, that's all I pretty much have to say about the ivy plant because I've never had one, I never found the need to get one, and I find there are so many other plants that are hanging or vining plants that just look so much better and are much easier to care for compared to the ivy plant. Okay, next up I want to talk about another common plant that a lot of people tend to buy, especially when they're not like super big plant enthusiasts. So this is the blooming anthurium plants. So these are just your local anthuriums that, you know, not the super rare kind, not like Clarinervia, crystallinums, regale, queen anthuriums, any of those, but these are the plants that you buy for their blooms. So not for their foliage. Their foliage are still like heart-shaped, but just not very, very like cute. And they don't have very striking veining and they're not like cool textured, like corrugated or velvet, whatever the case may be. These are just your regular old anthuriums. They come in a variety of colors. I've definitely seen pink, blooms, red blooms, white blooms, maybe even yellow. Actually, I'm not sure about yellow, but definitely the other colors. I've seen so many of those in grocery stores, in local nurseries, and I just don't really feel drawn to this plant. And I don't think the blooms look really good. There's actually another name for these anthurium plants, maybe like the flamingo plant. I don't even know how this is supposed to resemble a flamingo, but definitely not in my eyes. It definitely doesn't look like a flamingo to me. And I don't think it's very easy to re-bloom these plants. So if you buy a plant that's already in bloom and over time, the blooms decide to die, like, will you ever get them to bloom again? I don't know. I think it might be dependent on the environment that your plant is growing in and the care that you provide this plant with. A lot of different factors and you can't guarantee that these plants will constantly be in bloom 
bloom because that's definitely not the case and you'll be in for a very rude awakening if you think that this plant is going to be in bloom forever. If you don't enjoy the plant when it's not in bloom, then it's kind of not really the type of plant I really want to be buying anyway because most of the time plants are now in bloom. And if the foliage just looks very boring, and not nice, I, I don't want it in my collection. It's the reason why I don't want to add this anthurium to my collection, yet I like all the other anthuriums that are out there. Okay, next up on the plants that I probably won't be buying definitely includes the burrow's tail. So this is kind of like a hanging type of succulent, so it like drapes over the pot as it gets bigger and longer. It looks really, really nice, and I actually really enjoy this plant, but I won't be getting this for a whole load of reasons. So number one is this plant is notorious for dropping leaves very, very easily. Literally, the moment you touch the plant, it will just like shed all its leaves. So you have to be very careful about putting it into a place where it won't be knocked over, it won't be touched, it won't be accidentally brushed when you're like walking by. And I don't know, I don't have a lot of places where I just never really like walk by it or like touch it because then that means I probably won't be seeing that plant and I won't get to enjoy it. You have to be so careful about touching this plant also, when you're repotting this plant, oh my god, it would just be a complete nightmare just because all the leaves would just keep falling off every time you like shift the plant, every time you're trying to repot it into some new soil, and it's just a little hard <laughs> to care for, it, in my opinion, and those are really important factors for me because if I'm gonna have so much anxiety and stress about repotting a plant, then I probably don't want to keep that in my collection and I'll just admire it from afar, which is honestly not a big deal because I see these burrow's tails like literally everywhere. I see it in convenience stores, local nurseries, I see it at Home Depot, I see it everywhere and they're just really really cute when they're nice and lush but the moment leaves kind of get knocked off they'll start looking bare and like scraggly and just like not cute at all. And the last one I don't want to talk about is definitely the Pilea peperomoides. So this plant I've definitely shown so much hate on my channel so far and I'm sure you guys know why already but the main reason is that I don't like the growth pattern of this and how it kind of droops over as it gets more mature. So when it's a baby plant, it looks really, really cute and like bushy and just very compact. But then as it gets really, really big, it starts just looking really messy and you have to constantly be turning the plant so that it has enough light surrounding all the sides of the plant so that it can grow very symmetrically and just like upright as opposed to bending towards the light. Because once it does that, it's just like, it, it looks awful and then when you chop it back you have to regrow it it's just so much effort also i find this plant grows too many babies so there's so many like little propagations at the bottom of the plant and you have to constantly either be getting rid of them so that it doesn't suck all the energy from the mother plant or you have to care for too much of the plant and that's just way too much effort so you have to constantly be propagating you can give it to friends i mean if you want to share your plant with other people that would be very great and this would be the plant for you. It's a lot of work to propagate and then grow the roots and then give it to other people and share it. This plant is just not the type of growth pattern and growth habit and just look and aesthetic that I'm looking for in terms of getting plants that I want in my collection. So that pretty much concludes all the plants I wanted to talk about today. I know I'm always honestly hating on plants and that's because I've learned that I need to be really picky with the plants that I do buy for my collection because once you start getting like 50 plants, 100 plants, you don't want to just keep buying, buying, buying just because you see it on the internet, you see it on Instagram, you see your friends have it and that makes you want to get it. You have to really understand how this plant grows, how it will thrive and what this plant will do for you and if all those boxes are checked off as something that you would like, then go ahead and buy it because a lot of impulse purchases end up with with plants just kind of dying off and they look really ugly or like you start neglecting them or you fall out of love with them and that's just really not good. Well, save yourself the time and money and comment down below which plant you don't think that you will be by in terms of a common house plant. I would love to know because clearly I just talked about five of mine and yeah I hope you guys you know don't give me too much hate about this video. I do like making these videos because I like sharing my ideas and views on these plants and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.